Good morning and welcome to Unity Church. We are going to begin our service by saying our affirmation for this wonderful month of April. And I'll say it alone first and then please join me. Positive input nourishes me every day in every way. I am grateful. Together, positive input nourishes me every day in every way. I am grateful. And now we'll stand and we'll sing our opening signature song by Faith Rivera. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today's daily word is joy. I am joyful. I am free. Jesus spoke of joy as an inner quality, divine in nature. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Joy is my essence, a fundamental part of my being. Joy allows me to approach any circumstance with a lightness of spirit and a sense of humor. I love life. When I look at situations with optimism, the world around me revel, reveals wonder for all its offers. My bliss does not depend on outer conditions. Rather, happiness becomes my innate response, welling up from within. One joyful star thought starts a chain reaction, just as a ready smile invites others to smile too. I am, I am co-creator with God, developing the life I want. I am joyful, I am free. Consider it nothing but joy, that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 4. Again, today's daily word is joy, and our affirmation is, I am joyful, I am free. Together? I am joyful, I am free. Thank you, Ms. Lord. Yes, we so appreciate everyone. And now I invite you to visualize our sanctuary as a beautiful heart. So let's see this heart moving in and around and through each one of us, moving back into Sunday school and our children and our teacher, Caleb, back there. And we just let this heart expand and move, knowing that in our heart is all the love, the caring, the compassion that you have for yourself, your families, and others. Take a moment to breathe into this heart space and allow it to be filled with love. And in these moments, if you know of anyone in need of prayer, see them in our heart. And if you know of any circumstance in your life or in our world, See them in our heart as we sing the prayer for protection. And now I invite you to get comfortable where you are. Close your eyes if that feels right to you. And we begin our time of centering in prayer by just breathing. So let us take in a deep breath, that very breath of life that is God. And we hold it for a moment. And as we exhale, we just quiet our mind, calm our emotions, and allow ourselves to relax. Breathing in once more deeply. And exhaling deeply. We truly know that this is our time of reconnecting with the God of our being. And breathing in once more. And as we exhale this time, we rest in the consciousness of our heart. relaxing our breath. We truly know that in these moments, we are co-creators with God. Right here and right now, we reach into that secret place of the Most High, and we tap into that power 
the power of love, that creative power that knows no boundaries. We truly know that as we create our thoughts, we create our life. And we allow that energy within to fill us, to nurture us, and expand our mind and our heart. Truly know that there is no separation. Relax into this energy of healing. Relax into this energy of power. Relax into this energy of knowing. And we affirm right here and right now, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and as the universe. God the good. And we look for good. We know that our essence is of God. Therefore, we truly are co-creators with the God of our being. Know this to be true. And as we go into a time of quiet prayer, Allow yourself to feel that energy, that life force within you that is filled with creative ideas and the ability to carry them out. I invite you that you know what creative energy is in you, what divine ideas want to be manifest through you. And so in this quiet moment, truly ask and seek and knock and receive that guidance right here and right now in the silence. I invite you now to take another deep breath. And as we exhale this time, we express our gratitude from every cell in our being for that creative energy that creates in us, that brings forth divine ideas in the right and perfect way and the right and perfect order. And we say, thank you, Father, Mother, God, Holy Spirit of Truth, for this time apart in joy and love and creativity. And so it is. Amen. Ah, how is everyone today? Great, great. We're in the midst of studying our five spiritual principles. And today, okay, who remembers the first spiritual principle? This is your test for the morning. Anyone? It's on the front of your bulletin. Okay, uh, just in case. Patrick, a board member, yes. Good job, Patrick. One presence and one power active in the universe. And in our life, God the good. Number two, Diana needs her glasses. <laughs> 
Napua. Oh, she's a board member too. Napua is a board. Oh, the board. Look at your board of directors, people. They know the spiritual principles. Our essence is of God. Therefore, we are inherently good. Our essence is of God. Therefore, we are inherently good. Go us. Isn't that great? Okay, number three. Tell me what it is. And if those people showed up at your work to be co-creating, would you hire them? Yeah. Okay. It was a little weak. So let's try it again. You really want to have this job as a co-creator, right? Okay, so let's do it. We are co-creators with God, creating reality through thoughts, held in mind. The key sentence, thoughts held in mind. What are you holding in your mind right now? Anyone? Good to be here. Good to be here. Go Vince. Joy. Carlos filled with joy. You guys are laughing amongst yourselves, so we want to hear it too. Moira said. <laughs> She's hoping we're not going to ask what the next one is. She's so honest. That's next week. Okay. Okay, what else were you two laughing at over there, Don? He said nothing because I just meditated and I cleared my mind. He, nothing, he cleared his mind. And Andy's music took you to another dimension. Yay, God. Isn't this fun? We are those co-creators. What is it that you want to co-create? And remember, it's about the thoughts that we think that create our reality. Now, a lot of times we don't want to know that part because we say well if life is so not good right now I didn't do this Edwin Gaines is a great teacher and I'll never forget how she said who created this mess with her southern accent and it's true but in our subconscious mind is where that truth may lie so we come to unity, we learn about divine order, divine principle, and we learn about affirmations. And affirmations are words of, they're statements of truth. And so if you say to yourself, I am lovable, but deep down you have issues about being worthy and loved, what do you think will manifest in your life mostly? What your belief is. That is what happens to us on a daily basis. Remember we talked about 60,000 thoughts in our day, in our mind. And when they go out into the world, what do they do? They manifest somewhere and something. And how many of you know of uh, Psycho-Cybernetics, this book? This is a revised edition, but it's written with Maxwell Maltz, and he was, believe it or not, he was a doctor, and he was a, um, a surgeon who did cosmetic surgery. And uh, after you'd been in an accident, uh, you know, he did that kind of surgery. And what he noticed in his patients was that somehow when they got their faces or their body parts repaired, they took on a new energy. So that's what his work was all about, was finding out how that subconscious mind, that truth, would create a new reality. And some people went back to their old ways, even if they had a beautiful new body. So he worked and worked very hard on this. And so it came about in 1948, and so it was called Psycho-Cybernetics, the science of cybernetics. And it's all about learning what the truth is that you hold in your subconscious mind and how that will manifest the truth. So if you truly believe that you are not worthy, guess what happens in your life? Unworthy experiences. So we come to unity and we have to dig deep. I'm one of those kind of people who let's, let's roll up our sleeves, let's go in and find out what's really going on so that the affirmations will work. And those positive thoughts will work in our lives. So I'm going to tell you, this is one of my favorite stories in this book. Because it's about how our imagination, our thoughts, and our subconscious mind make us believe. And so imagine that a friend who has just moved to a newly fashionable part of town has invited you to dinner. 
When you arrived, the closest parking space you could find was on a side street four blocks away. Now it's late and you're remembering that there are worse horrors in the big city than parking. The lighting is poor, the streets are empty, and the warehouses turned artist lofts are either on the side, like the towers of houses have villains' castles in an old Vincent Price movie. How many of you know who Vincent Price is? Thank goodness. Some people don't, and they won't. Suddenly you think you hear footsteps. Have any of you ever had that experience before? Yes. Yes, our former police officer. Yes, many times, yes. You hear footsteps. You turn quickly and look. There's nobody there. It was only your imagination. It was your thoughts. And you tell yourself, you continue, walk, continue walking. There they are again, those footsteps right behind you. I've walked in San Francisco late at night. Sometimes it's not the wisest thing to do. What's happening to your body, your heart, your hands, your blood pressure, and your breathing? Okay, they get a little rapid, don't they? Does it matter whether there really is someone following you? Of course not. These psychological preparations for fight or flight are entirely a product of your subconscious mind and your thinking. They were programmed into this species before we were human. They're going to happen whether you're being stalked by a saber-toothed cat, a mugger, or the echo of your own footsteps. The echo of your own footsteps. You break into a run. The footsteps stay right with you. Adrenaline searches through your body. You run though your life depended on it, and maybe it does. You're only a block from your car. You can make it. You can make it. Hey, will you slow down over familiar voice calls? With relief, you turn and you see your friend panting toward you, waving your favorite hat. You forgot this. I had no idea you were in such good shape. Hey, who did you think I was? The Boston Strangler. And what happens to your pounding heart then? Your sweaty palms in the Olympic speed? Everything returns to normal. But out of that experience of our thoughts and our subconscious mind, we created someone coming after us. And it truly was someone returning something that belonged to you. But what we tell ourselves and what we believe goes out into our world. And if we think we are in trouble, our body responds to it and creates that energy. We're going to fight or we're going to run. And some people run even though they don't know they're in very good shape or not so good a shape. And we start panting and breathing. So that's what we do when we send that energy out into the world. And so we want to know that as co-creators of God and knowing that we are the essence of God, we are a part of life. Every, every cell in our being is of God. And so just as a wave is a part of the ocean, it's made of the same water, the same salt, the same minerals, we are living in this ocean, breathing, moving through as God, co-creating our world as we believe. So we have to know in the depth of our being that we are that. And is it difficult? When I came to Unity, I was like, oh, I know I'm going to be struck by lightning by saying that I am as good as God. Any of you come from any of that old time religion? I did. I was really afraid. I just was always watching like something bad has to happen because I'm having a new belief system here. Any of you felt that way? When you get a new idea, a new thought, and you grab hold of it, Guess what the old stuff does? It wants to fight back. It wants to say, hey, you're right. Bad things are going to happen because you're taking on new belief systems. Well, I'll tell you what, it didn't happen. And here we are. And after all these years of truth and learning and experiencing God, we get to do what it is we're divinely appointed to do. And when I was younger, you know, over 30 years ago, I wanted to do this. I wanted with all my heart to be a unity minister, and it has happened. 
And so that's no matter what belief systems I may have had, may have had, or the thoughts that I had that tried to keep me back in that place of insurance. I was an insurance agent. And was I happy in my job? Most of the time. Especially when I was talking to clients. But was it something I knew I wanted to do for the rest of my life? No way. So at first when I started coming over to Kona, I still worked full time during the week as an insurance agent and came here on the weekends and brought bagels for my, bagel, my daughter's bagel store. And that's how this began to happen 17 years ago. By the grace of God, we are still here carrying on Reverend Carlton Bubolts' dream and his wife, Jeannie. They had a dream to have unity in Kona and it is still here going strong. The faces may change, but the energy is still love and it is still God. And so the Buddha said many 2,500 years ago, all that awe, A-W-E, are as a result of what we have thought. If a man speaks or acts with an evil thought, pain follows him. If a man speaks or acts with a pure thought, happiness follows him like a shadow that never leaves. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. That is what we're about. And one experiment, I do this often when I do this lesson, and many of you knew, know about the purple elephant. How many of you know the purple elephant? None of you? This is going to be great. Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Everyone, take a breath so you don't freak out at the first part. And I want you to absolutely not think of a purple, purple elephant in this room. It is so big and purple that it's making you feel like, oh my gosh. But I want you to absolutely not think of it in any way, shape, or form. There is no purple elephant in this room. No matter what you're thinking, you cannot think of a purple elephant. Okay, open your eyes. I'm not a purple elephant, okay? <laughs> Got blue on today. But isn't it true? How many of you had trouble every time I said purple elephant? Weeha, what happened in your mind? You saw it. Now, is there a purple elephant in this room? No. But those thoughts held in mind produced after their kind. That's the beauty of doing all of this new thought work. Because we can change what we think about anything. It's so powerful. And eventually, someone would manifest a purple elephant. And how many of you might end up going to a circus and you'll see a purple elephant and you'll know what I'm talking about. But that's what happens in our life. And I want to be sure that everyone has their little vial. Does everyone have one? Mm-hmm. I want to be sure everyone has one. And if you don't, Akiko, raise your hand high and she'll give you one. Oh, she needs lots of help. Okay. Jim's going to take care of that. We just want to be sure everyone has one, so at that prime moment, we'll know what to do. So when we're with people who have a different thought process than we do, sometimes it'll seemingly bring you down. And sometimes it'll take you to another level. Which do you prefer? Hanging with people who take you to another level, to that space. And if the top breaks off, like it did with Shannon, we can get you another one. And if it broke, just open it gently, OK? Just gently. But you don't need to open it yet, and you don't need to blow yet. And if it breaks, raise your hand. Akiko likes walking around here today. It happened to me, so I, I get that. Just keep, just keep your hands up, everybody. 
And if you keep breaking them, what can I say? <laughs> Thoughts are things. Okay, just gently open it. It happened to me this morning when I was opening it up. There they are. Pass them around. Yeah, gently, it'll work gently. Yeah, pull up on it. Don't twist it. If you twist it, you turn it off. Just gently pull it up like that. And if you went to a wedding, this is what you'd be doing. But don't blow it yet, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this is you. You are this beautiful vial. Hmm? <laughs> What'd you say, Cindy? You're, oh, you could be the broken one. But what do you do? What do you do with the broken one? You set it aside and get a new one. That's what we're doing. See, you guys are so powerful. You created the lesson when you thought you'd made a mistake. And there's no mistake. There is no mistake. Okay, so now you know that you are this vial, and inside this vial are lots of thoughts. Some of you have bubbles like mine already. They're just all, so we have 60,000 of these thoughts. Jim's just going for it. <laughs> James. But his Jim came out just, I called him Jim, because his Jim came out. Okay, so picture that in our world, we have the opportunity of releasing Everyone in this room is going to release 60,000 thoughts in a day. That's a lot of thinking. And that's just with us here. Whether they're good thoughts or negative thoughts, they're still going to go out. So on the count of three, three, two, one, I want you all to blow bubbles. You can blow them up or down or whatever, but not in someone's face. Because we want to get an idea of what it's like to have 60,000 thoughts, positive or negative, filling this room. Three, two, one, go. And keep dipping, because you're not done yet. Keep. And then I want you to look around. Everyone who's in the front, look in the back and see what's happening. And hopefully they're still working. Keep it going, because you're not done. Do you think you stop thinking just because you want to stop thinking? Life isn't like that. Look around, people. Are you having fun? OK, we want it to be fun. How many of you want to be perfect? How many of you want to make it just right and make it go where you want it to go? Mamie's bringing that later. She's got refreshments. Okay, so you looked around. Look around and see what's happening. So all of these thoughts are floating. Did you catch some of them? Are you happy with the thoughts you caught? Do you know where they came from? No, we don't know where these thoughts come from. But if everyone in this room, keep blowing, Larry wants a picture, a big picture of bubbles. So these are our thoughts, our expressions of God going out into the universe. Do you want them to be more positive? Yes. yes. Do you want them to be more fun? Yes. How many of you are laughing as you're doing this? Why isn't Larry singing Tiny Bubbles? <laughs> That's the champagne song. How many of you feel silly? Great. What else are you feeling? Joy, our daily word. Joyful. The most infallible sign of the presence of God is joy. So when you create a joy bubble, I invite you to remember thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. So hopefully after today, when you see bubbles anywhere, and you're invited to take them all with you if you need more, but I want you to practice. What'd you say, Mamie? I need a box full. She needs a box full. Okay, next time I'll bring the bigger ones, right? It's a good practice. 
<laughs> Husbands. <laughs> we want to create joy in our life. We want to create these joy bubbles. We want to be consciously aware of what we're thinking so that we're not picking up all the left and right and whatever from anyone. We want to be clear, consciously aware of what we're creating. So I invite you this week, okay, everybody go to Walmart and buy yourself big bottles of bubble, or you can get that gazillion bubble machine and just turn it on. And we're blowing out all that negative air too. That's a good thing. Was it a fun event? Yes. Something that will stay in your conscious mind. That's the fun part of being with everyone today because we're here to co-create and we're creating this life, this newness in our ministry every day and in us every day, our families every day, our loved ones, our work, wherever we are, God is and God is good. Thank you, everyone.